This lab is about closed loop control systems. These types of systems are really common. In this lab, we'll be doing temperature control. Temperatures do tend to change slowly, so you may have to be patient while you're waiting for the system to respond. Before I talk about this lab specifically, I want to introduce some general concepts and terms relative to feedback control. The thing or the process being controlled is called the plant. The plant has some input and some output. The goal of any control system is to adjust the input to the plant in order to get the output that we want. Examples of this are everywhere. When you're cooking, you adjust the setting on the stove burner to get your frying pan to the right temperature. In control systems, the controller is typically an automated system that adjusts the input to the plant in order to get the desired output. The controller also has inputs. One of them is called the reference input and is usually what you want your plant's output to be. In our stove example, a controller would receive a desired pan temperature and then it would adjust the burner setting so that the pan temperature matches that reference. In closed loop control, the controller also receives a measurement of the plant output. That measurement is compared to the desired plant output and the controller adjusts the input to the plant accordingly. In this lab, we're going to design and build a closed loop temperature control system. Our circuit will adjust the voltage across a resistor to automatically control the resistor's temperature. This is a block diagram showing the components of the system and their inputs and outputs. The plant is simply a resistor whose temperature needs to be at some desired value. The desired temperature will be set by a reference voltage, VREF. The higher VREF is, the higher the desired temperature of the resistor is. In order to perform closed loop control, we need to measure the actual temperature of the resistor using a temperature measurement system. This system will output a voltage, VACT, that's proportional to the resistor's temperature. The controller will accept the voltage representing the desired temperature and the voltage representing the actual temperature. Its output is a voltage to the resistor. If the actual temperature is too low, the controller increases the voltage to the resistor and the resistor heats up. If the actual temperature is too high, the voltage to the resistor is reduced, the resistor loses heat to its surroundings and cools off. The first subsystem we'll talk about is the temperature measurement system. I'm going to use a simple voltage divider to output a voltage that's proportional to the temperature of a thermistor. I want the output voltage to be zero volts at room temperature. To achieve that, I'm going to use two power supplies, plus five volts here and negative five volts here. The output voltage, VACT, and both power supplies all have to be relative to the same reference, indicated by this ground symbol. I'll use a potentiometer to implement this variable resistance, RADJ. Since I want the output voltage to be zero when the thermistor is at room temperature, I'll measure this voltage while I change the value of this resistance. Once I've got a zero volt reading at room temperature, I've got the correct resistance value. Now let's build this part of the circuit and test its operation. This is our thermistor its resistance decreases as temperature increases. I've put that in series with a potentiometer. The resistance of my thermistor is about 11 to 12 kilo ohms at room temperature, so this potentiometer needs to cover a range of resistances that includes that value. I've used a 50 kilo ohm pot. I want to measure the temperature of this power resistor, so I need to attach the thermistor to the power resistor. It'll be easier to do that before I get very far in my circuit construction. I'm not going to be applying power to this resistor yet, so I can plug it into the breadboard pretty much anywhere, as long as I can reach it with my thermistor. I'll just use some tape to attach the thermistor to the resistor. Now I'll talk about my power supply and measurement connections. I'll use the positive power supply, the red wire, to apply positive 5 volts to this terminal of the thermistor. And the negative power supply, the white wire, to apply negative 5 volts to this terminal of the pot. My voltage measurement will be the voltage difference between the terminal shared by the pot and the thermistor relative to ground. 
I'm using channel one of the voltmeter to measure this voltage. So the orange wire is connected here, and the orange wire with a white stripe is connected to ground, which is the black wire. Now let's turn on power and test the temperature measurement circuit. First I'll go to the supplies tool. Both of my power supplies are ready and they're set to positive and negative 5 volts. Click on the master enable to turn on power. Now let's open the voltmeter instrument, run that. I'm getting about 1 volt. I need to adjust my potentiometer to get that to be about 0 since the resistor is currently at room temperature. That's probably close enough to zero for our purposes. Now my temperature measurement system is working, so let's move on to designing and building the controller. For our controller, I'm going to use what's commonly called a difference amplifier. It has two inputs, here and here. VREF is the desired temperature, and VACT is the actual measured temperature. This voltage, V sub R, is the voltage that will be applied to the power resistor whose temperature we're controlling. These two resistors both have resistance R1, and these two resistors both have resistance R2. Mathematically modeling this as a linear circuit leads to this input-output relationship. The output is the difference between the two inputs, Vref minus Vact, multiplied by a gain, which is the ratio of R2 to R1. Before I describe how this works as a controller, let's also talk about the op-amp supply voltages, because those are crucial to this circuit's operation. I'll use a 9-volt battery as the positive supply voltage, and I'm going to ground the negative supply voltage. This is important, since the rails set the limits on the output voltage. Grounding this negative supply means that the output voltage, VR, can't be negative. First, let's talk about the case when the desired temperature is greater than the actual temperature. In this circumstance, V ref minus V actual is positive, voltage is applied to the power resistor, and the resistor heats up. The greater the difference between the desired and actual temperatures, the greater the resistor voltage will be, and the faster the resistor will heat. Also, increasing the ratio R2 to R1 will increase the rate of heat addition. On the other hand, if the actual temperature is higher than the desired temperature, the resistor is too hot and we want to stop applying power to the resistor and let it cool down. This equation, however, won't let that happen. A negative voltage here will just result in V sub R being negative, which will still cause the resistor to heat up. What we really want to do is turn the power off and let the resistor cool down on its own. Applying zero volts at the negative supply accomplishes this. That means that the lowest resistor voltage this circuit can put out is zero. So when the resistor is too hot, the negative voltage supply overrides this equation and the circuit just stops providing power to the resistor. We often ignore rails when we analyze a circuit. However, in this case, the rail is crucial to making the system work. Now let's demonstrate implementation and testing of this circuit. This is my TCA0372 op amp. This chip has two op amps on it. I'll use op amp A to implement my circuit. The negative voltage terminal is connected to ground here, any of the black wires. And the positive voltage supply is connected to the positive terminal of my 9 volt battery. All of the voltages on this circuit have to share the same ground, so the negative terminal of the battery is also connected to this ground. So I'm using channel 2 of my voltmeter, the blue wire and the blue wire with the white stripe, to measure the output voltage relative to ground. I'm using two resistors with the same nominal resistance for my R1 values, here and here. One of them connects to the non-inverting input of the op amp here, and the other connects to the inverting input. At this point, it doesn't really matter where the other terminals of these two resistors are connected. These are my two R2 resistors. One of the R2 resistors connects the inverting input to the output. The other resistor connects the non-inverting input to ground. I don't want to specify the actual values for R1 and R2 that I'm using.
since you need to choose your own resistances. But I will say that the gain I'm expecting, R2 over R1, is about 20. To test my circuit, I'll apply voltages using the waveform generator to both of the different amplifier inputs. I'll use channel 1 of my waveform generator, the yellow wire, to apply the voltage VREF, the voltage going into the non-inverting input. I use channel 2 of the waveform generator to apply the voltage VACT. So channel 1 is specifying the temperature that I want, and channel 2 is specifying the temperature I'm measuring. Now let's apply some test voltages and see if this circuit behaves as we expect. I'm applying my test voltages with the WaveGen instrument. My test case will be the case where my desired voltage is 100 millivolts. It's set to be a constant or DC value. My actual voltage will be set to be 0 volts. Click on Run to apply the voltages. And check what voltages I'm getting. Getting 1.9 volts at my output. That's about 20 times the difference between VREF and VActual, so the circuit appears to be functioning correctly. Finally, let's talk about interconnecting the components to make the overall circuit function. This is a schematic of the complete system. The resistor we're heating is here. The voltage V sub R, that's the output of the difference amplifier, is applied across this resistor. The thermistor is attached to this resistor, so as the resistor changes temperature, the thermistor's resistance changes. This, in turn, changes the voltage, VACT, in this voltage divider. This voltage indicates the temperature of the power resistor. The voltage VACT is applied to this terminal of the difference amplifier, and the reference voltage is applied to this terminal. So we can set the reference voltage, which will create a voltage difference here, which changes the voltage applied to the resistor, which changes the measured voltage. Ultimately, this circuit will adjust the voltage applied to the resistor, V sub R of T, in order to make the actual voltage match the reference voltage. Now let's make the connections necessary on our previous circuit to close this feedback loop. Now all I needed to do is make the connections that I need to close the feedback control loop. I'm going to take the output voltage from the op amp and connect it with this red jumper wire to one of the terminals of the power resistor. The other terminal of the power resistor gets grounded. I can disconnect channel 2 that I was using to simulate V actual and use this jumper wire to connect the temperature measurement system to one of my inputs on the op amp. I'll leave channel 1 as my reference input to the controller. Let's start measuring data. Channel 1 is the actual measured temperature, and channel 2 is the voltage applied to the resistor. If I go to the waveform generator and apply a 1 volt input as my reference, I immediately increase the voltage to the resistor, and my temperature starts to climb. Now, after a minute or two, my temperature is almost to the 1 volt reference value, and my voltage applied to the resistor is starting to drop. And finally, I've reached my 1 volt value on my actual temperature and the resistor voltage is approximately zero. I've been using voltage interchangeably with temperature in this lab. There's actually a unit conversion I should be doing to relate the two. That conversion process isn't really central to basic control system concepts, though, so I've ignored it. 